This is The Briefing on Monocle Radio. Finally, on today's show, some historians and philosophers argue that we've entered a new geological era called the Anthropocene, where human activity is having significant and irreversible effects on the planet. A new book by the award-winning London-born Algerian philosopher and Brown University professor Mohamed Amar Mazian uh, called The States of the Earth, an Ecological and Racial History of Secularisation, aims to tell readers how we got here. Monocle contributor Marisa Mazria Katz sat down with Mezian to discuss his work. I want to read a short passage from the book that I think cuts straight to the heart of it. Not so long ago, European miners still thought that demons inhabited the underground world. They thus anticipated dreadful encounters with such demons each time they worked in those subterranean labyrinths called mines. The story indicates that massive extraction of underground resources on a global scale would not have been possible without a disenchantment of the soils and the subsoils. Hence, a new question about our troubled times. If modernity is the Anthropocene, and if modernity is secular, is there a secularocene? I want to pick up on this word, secularocene. What is it, and, and what does it mean? Let me take an example. Let's imagine we're talking to the Earth and we're asking the Earth if the Earth accepts to bear the burden of heaven. Well, precisely, my point would be that the Earth would say, no, I don't want to bear the burden of heaven. But the argument of the book is precisely that this is what moderns asked the Earth. That is to say, moderns did not abandon the dream of salvation. They did not abandon heaven. They tried to make heaven on earth. Earth, And by trying to make heaven on earth, they destroyed the earth itself. Precisely because resources are finite, it cannot realize or embody something that to some extent would presuppose an infinite progress and therefore infinite resources that actually we don't have. The book's title, The States of the Earth, seems to have a dual meaning. On one hand, it's an inquiry about the physical state in which earth finds itself, but it's also investigating the idea of the sovereign state which governs a land. Can you tell us why you chose this title? And how does it capture the story you wanted to tell? The title does have a dual meaning. Oftentimes, scholars say that capitalism would be the driving force or the cause of of the climate crisis, and I agree with that. But one of the questions I'm trying to ask is, where does capitalism come from? And one of the things or the process capitalism comes from is precisely the state, that is to say the making of a specific form of political organization that is what we call the nation state, which is centralized, has borders, and exercises violence on its own territory, which precisely is a monopoly of legitimate violence, as we say. And so my argument is that to understand the making and the emergence of these states that will eventually become capitalistic states, we have to understand how we went from Christendom to modern nation states and civil societies. So this precisely is what I call secularization. This is to say, that is to say, this transition from a largely Christian world to to a less Christian world, if you will. I want to shift to the Middle East, which is such a large part of the story you're trying to tell with the book. Do you see the states of the earth as retelling the story of the modern Middle East? And and if so, how? When people write the history of the Middle East, they tend to focus on the British Empire. The book actually connects the French and the British Empire and challenges most of the chronologies that we presuppose when we talk about the Arab world today. 1798 is the expedition to Egypt, which was precisely made by Napoleon, that is to say by the French Republic or the French state. And what I'm trying to show is that what happened in Egypt and in Palestine at that time was to some extent transferred to Algeria in 1830. So basically what happens in Algeria, um, which seems to be marginal, is actually very central because Algeria is the first... Muslim country and actually more precisely the first Ottoman province to be colonized by a European power. So 
For that reason, it anticipates a process that is going to be generalized to the rest of the Arab world during the 19th century, but also more specifically after the First World War and during the 20th century. One last quote and one last question. You write, the earthly paradise promised by industrialists is increasingly resembling hell, thus indicating that the earth will never bear the burden of heaven. And I I was thinking about this and, and how it relates to ways in which we are newly plundering the earth while using words to reframe that activity. For instance, artificial intelligence. Do you see a parallel between the promises of industrialization and artificial intelligence today? Yes, I think there is more than a parallel. I think there is a continuity. I think that this dream of making heaven on earth or an earthly paradise is not something that uh, has disappeared. I think many actors of what we call big tech or sometimes cognitive capitalism actually do think of what they're doing as, as a sort of way of recreating Uh, if you will, the world, creating new machines, creating a new kind of humanity. And to some extent, it's this sort of very old imperial dream of being the divine or literally God on earth, right? There is also a historical connection, in my view, between, if you will, radical forms of secularism and AI itself, because one of the reasons why AI was so important for some philosophers and some you know, developers or inventors was precisely the idea that the mind would be reducible to a computer, which was one of the ways in which these philosophers and scientists said that our mind is only purely an effect of our brain. And so you see here that this notion that our minds should work as computers is premised on a notion that we have to get rid of anything that resembles a religion. And this is the paradox in the book. By trying to get rid of religion, they are creating a new kind of religion, but in this world. And that was Monocle contributor Marisa Masria-Katz, and she was speaking to Mohamed Amma Mezian. And that's all for this edition of The Briefing, which was produced by Anita Riotta. Our researcher was Maisie Ringer and our studio manager was Alan Whedon. The Briefing is back tomorrow at the same time. I'm Georgina Godwin. Goodbye and thanks for listening. <laughs>